454, which is way, way, way undersized. I don't know if this gun can be cleaned or repaired because even though I tried to remove the leading, it was difficult. I got some of it out. Uh, the pitting is a problem. This here is a little bit different. You can see the grooves on it, and but it's still undersized. So that there is kind of one that's maybe just the leading and salvageable. But some of these get bad. Now we'll go to our uh, 50 cals. And I got two different rifles here. I don't know if you can see it. This one came out correctly at 515. And if you notice the grooves, you can see sharp edges on them. This one here came out at 510 with the barrels of lead. You don't see the sharp edges on it. You know, it looks. So again, it's measuring your uh, groove diameters is a good indication if the bore is very bright and shiny. Okay, so now once we establish that, let's go on to the different techniques that I've tried and we'll discuss how to remove the leading. Okay, now you want to remove the leading. There's nobody gives an exact technique or tells you how. Everybody mentions it in these books and says this and that, but Nobody gives you a specific technique of how to do it. Two of the guaranteed easy ways, which are not available, is a very old-fashioned way is plug the barrel up, fill it with mercury, and mercury will dissolve the lead. Can't do that. It's very hazardous. Get mercury is dangerous, and you could poison and kill yourself. So, and the availability of mercury is not that easy to get anymore. The other way that was good was uh, Otter's Fallout, which had a specific lead solution, and it was uh, reverse electroplating. You fill the barrel with solution, turn on a little electric charge to a rod, and it draws the lead out. This works, but on the other hand, they don't make that product anymore. You can't get the solution, even if you have the rod and the electric rig, so that's out. Most people go with Hoppy's number nine and scrub the hell out of the bore. That is why you get these mirror-like, highly polished bores that are leaded to crap. Okay? Hoppy's number nine does not remove lead fouling, especially if it's heavy. You can try it. I've sat here and I've scrubbed these guns all afternoon long, 100 strokes, whatever. Now, I'm going to mention, I'm not going to show you, but you get oversized brushes. You get like 50 caliber brushes for the 4570 and 54 caliber brushes for the 57. So Hoppy's alone doesn't work. I've tried JB Borbright compound, both types, with oversized bronze brushes. Scrub. It gets, you know, this stuff will take rust and clean out a lot of stuff. It's very good, but it doesn't really remove the lead. Okay? Now, there's another product, this here, uh, I tried it, I soaked it, really no effect on a type of leading, maybe it works on 22s and smaller things, fine. Uh, I tried uh, the uh, Lewis lead remover, I've done a video on it, which is basically a rubber plug on the end of a rod with a copper mesh brush, or a copper mesh washer and you pull it and the washer like grabs the lead and peels it out. I've used it on pistols in the past. It's very difficult. You got to pull real hard. I don't know if it will work on a long 32 inch rifle barrel. That could be a problem. Using, keeping this in mind, a lot of people say to use shore girls, which is a copper scholar you pay you buy. They take this and people, oh, I use this. Now, I don't know, I've cut one of these apart, wrapped it around an oversized brush, and in one rifle, it was tight going in. When it hit a tight spot, I pushed it through, and I think it removed some of it. But it broke the cleaning rod and a lot of problems. It takes some out, but nobody tells you again the technique of how do you wrap this around a brush or how do you use it. Okay, so I tried this and it didn't work. Then there's this old time gunsmithing formula which is equal parts 
of Kroll penetrating oil, this uh, turpentine, which is made from pine sap, it's not uh, petroleum based, and Hoppy's number nine. This was considered the old time gunsmith's formula, equal parts of these three things, makes a very weird smelling solution, and again, didn't really see much of an effect. Okay. Now, in reading the books, I heard one casual mention, and this is the one thing I found that worked. It's carburetor cleaner. Just generic carburetor cleaner. Spray that in the bore, scrub the hell out of it with an oversized brush, and it, it actually did in one of them remove, you know, when I pushed the patch through, there were little bits of letting that come out of the grooves in that. This is the only thing I've found. How many times you got to do it, how often, I don't know because every time I put it in there it's gray and the patch comes out gray and you can feel it. Um, you can see, like if you spray this on the brush, it knocks all the stuff off and as you're pushing it in there a gray residue will come out. So I think it does remove the lead, but nothing measurable. Nothing that I can see, you know. And, but that's probably the best thing and the only thing I've used that had any results. Carburetor cleaner. If you use this, clean your bore out with hoppies or any other solvent. Don't just scrub this and leave it because I think it strips all the oil and stuff out of the bore will rust like crazy. So if you use this to remove the leading, make sure you clean it out again with hoppies and then oil it or put some sort of protectant on it. Last thing that I found I'm going to try is this product here. Let's see, now this is a strange product. I couldn't get it. I just got it last week. Supposedly you put this into the gun and let it sit. They said 20 minutes. This thing's telling me an hour. Uh, it will remove the finish on copper and brass and stock so it's kind of and wear gloves because I got some of this on my skin it dried my damn skin up it's real bad it's supposedly a red liquid gel which it isn't it's a liquid not a gel and you swab it on the bore and it chemically changes the lead and dissolves it and you're supposed to just push a patch out I tried this it's white and clear and when it goes in the bore it turns red and the patch came out orange and I don't know but of course that was after I cleaned the bore and got most of the, the lead out with with the uh, carburetor cleaner. I do have a leaded bore. I'm going to disassemble the gun. I'm going to try this. I'm going to swab the bore out with this and let it set for an hour and I'm going to see if it removes the lead. If not we're going to go back to the carburetor cleaner but that's this is a tough subject. It's hard to measure. It's hard to know. It's hard to see. Okay, the slugging is the only guaranteed way and the slug has to come out to the specifics. But that's what I've done so far. And this too, this stuff here is weird. Uh, you got to wipe your bore out and re-oil it if you use this because I don't know if it's caustic or what. I mean, wear rubber gloves when you open this cap and start handling this stuff. So. I'm going to go. I got two guns I got to work on today. I'm going to take them apart and uh, I'll show you what we're going to do with them and we'll see if any of this crap works. We got a Springfield trap door that we know the barrel's lead. Okay, we're going to try to use this wipe out no lead product. Now, this supposedly you wipe this on there, let it set, and then the lead will come out as a pink residue. Now they advertise this as a red gel. It's not red. It's not a gel. It's a liquid. Also, wear gloves because this stuff's pretty vile. The way I apply it, it does turn red in the barrel for some damn reason. I don't know. I got a bore mop. And it's going to fit in there. I've used this once before. It's that pinkish stuff. So what I'm going to do is screw this on. Coat this barrel down real good. Okay, I gotta get my here. Hang on. 